Good afternoon, everybody. Thanks for joining us. Uh, Wednesday afternoon, what is it, 3.30, a little after 3.30. We're a little late today because, as I mentioned, on Monday, we had the Board of Estimate and Apportionment at 2 o'clock today. So I've got a few things that I'd like to talk about, and then, of course, we're going to take your questions. One, I'm going to update you on COVID. Second thing I'm going to talk about is... Um, well, I didn't write the second thing, thing down. What was my second thing? Okay, I've got four things here. COVID, North-South Metro, I want to talk about that a little. Downtown. And e a Oh, yeah, I'm going to update you on e a Sorry. Okay, so with regard to COVID, not a lot of change uh, in the last few days. We, uh, <clears throat> one spot of good news is that um, we have 249 people in the hospital right now, confirmed cases. That is down, uh, it's down 10 from uh, yesterday. So that is down a little bit and that's good. We still have 71 people though in ICU and that's been, uh, it's been really mostly right about 75. So it's down a few. With 41 people though still on ventilators, that's been a, a pretty steady number. We had 37 patients admitted to the hospital, 59 discharged. So that's good, and of course you can see that's what has caused our, the number of hospitalizations to go down. So, but still pretty stubborn numbers, uh, pretty much of a plateau. Uh, we, when we look at it on a graph, we see just a tad of a, a downturn. So, those are our COVID numbers. We um, uh, are hoping that with some of the new measures that have been put in place with regard to bars and restaurants closing at 11 o'clock, with regards to um, large venues going to 50% capacity, and now with Illinois uh, going to also closing their bars and restaurants at 11 o'clock. St. Louis County's already closed, they close at 10. Uh, but we're hoping that we're going to see uh, some effect from that pretty soon. Um, <clears throat> we do still see that the still the highest number of cases is people in their 20s. That, that age group is the highest. And then people in their 30s is the second highest. So we're still seeing that. And that, that has not turned around for us yet. One of the things that we are seeing is that our, uh, the length of time that it's taking to get tests back is running a little bit better. Uh, we still have a few <clears throat> yesterday, for example. We had three cases that looks like they were over two weeks old. Three of the 41 uh, cases were over two weeks old, but the rest of them were um, right in the seven, eight, day range. The average was about four days. So that's what we are, uh, that's what we're seeing there. So um, not a lot of new news on the, on the numbers front of COVID. I did mention on Monday that um, what we have seen here is a real uptick in the number of cases in South St. Louis, particularly 63116, which um, this is a 14 day rolling average, but uh, not average, 14 day period of time. So that's changed by a couple of days. 90, 91, 44 in uh, 63109, 44 in 63104, 47 in 63118. Uh, so <clears throat> continuing, uh, continuing to see that, uh, that situation. Um, one of the things I want to mention yesterday on the pandemic task force call, you know, the task force is focusing on, um, beginning to focus on, think about the flu. And, you know, the flu, of course, is another respiratory illness. And it won't be too long, it'll be probably a few weeks until people can begin getting the flu vaccine. And it's going to be more important than ever to get the flu vaccine this year uh, because 
you know, the flu and COVID symptomatically are somewhat close. And so certainly you don't want to get the flu and COVID. And um, this mask wearing and hand washing and social distancing though, should also help a bit with tamping down the spread of the flu. Uh, they're seeing that in some other countries and um, south of the equator where you know they've they've been through this flu season already so that's uh that's important be sure to get your flu vaccine you know we don't have a vaccine yet for covid um but it's going to be really important for all of us to continue to stay as healthy as possible because um we don't we don't want to infect one another all right that is covid um with regard to um, north-south transportation. You, you may have seen yesterday, we posted this on social media and put out a press release, that the city has issued an RFP uh, for a study, and I know some of you are rolling your eyes saying, oh, another study, but we really need to rethink this because uh, five years ago or so, there was a study about the expansion of, of Metrolink to a north-south route. That study said that the Metrolink expansion would cost close to a billion dollars, 900 and some million, and that it would cost 24 million a year to operate. Now the city, voters um, four years ago, I guess about four years ago, three to four years ago, passed a half cent sales tax of which 60% or about 12 million a year is, goes into a savings account, if you will, for the local match portion of north-south expansion. And what's making us look at this again is to say, how will we ever accumulate enough money to both meet the local match portion of a close to a billion dollar project and then have the 24 million a year probably more by the time it's built, 24 million a year to operate it. And so what we're looking at, asking the consultants to look at here is what's the viability of using that, those funds, perhaps for another uh, method of transportation, because we know that public transportation is really important to people and we don't wanna sit on this money, we wanna try to figure out well, what, what can we do uh, in order to provide tr better transportation for people. We don't know the answers to that yet. That's the reason for uh, this study, but <clears throat> we expect to have, you know, we'll award the contract and it'll take a while for this to get done. But, uh, you know, there are a number of people that are, um, that think an idea called BRT, Bus Rapid Transit, which is not just a bus. It's a, a bus in a dedicated lane with dedicated stops um, that, is a, a high end. I think w what we said in the RFP was a gold standard. And so w that's one of the things that we want to look at. So that's been in the news in the last day or two. And I just wanted to bring that to your attention. Now, the um, <clears throat> Board of Estimate and Apportionment, we just finished that up maybe 20, 30 minutes ago. And we did a couple of, of uh, things that I think we should all be proud of. One, and I told you that we were doing this, the Board of ENA passed an additional $2 million to go into rental assistance, rental and mortgage assistance. Let me give you a little update on that. As you know, we had already allocated $5.4 million through the CARES Act. Um, <clears throat> to date, we've re received 6,500 applications. Now, about a third of those applications were not from the city of St. Louis. They were from St. Louis County or other jurisdictions and we're referring those applications over to them. But we still have about 4,200 applications that are from the city and uh, provided all the documentation um, is, is available, will be eligible for uh, mortgage or rental assistance. Uh, we're working <clears throat> with about 15 local agencies, providers, United Way, Employment Connection, Catholic Charities, uh, in order to help mediate these amounts and then whatever's decided on, pay that directly to the landlords. 
excuse me. A priority is being given to folks that are already in the eviction pipeline and um, it's limited to $3,500 a household and hopefully, hopefully won't even be that much in many cases. So that's the first thing ENA did that I want to bring to your attention. They allocated that $2 million. <clears throat> Second thing that ENA did, excuse me, one minute. Too much talking. Second thing that ENA did was allocated um, close to $900,000 to the federally qualified health centers for them to be able to implement telehealth so that <coughs> not everybody can get to the federally qualified health centers. And this will be uh, an opportunity for people to see their doctor via telehealth. So I think that's an important thing. What have I got? Lastly, <coughs> excuse me, lastly, um, we talked on Monday about the, um, I'll call it the chaos, the traffic chaos in downtown, bad behavior, people driving fast, people racing, people doing donuts on parking lots. And so one of the things that you're going to see in downtown beginning, beginning Thursday evening, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday, <clears throat> there will be sections of some streets that will be closed. There will be other streets, uh, major thoroughfares that may be narrowed down in order to prevent some of this uh, speeding. Um, you will see uh, additional law enforcement. You probably see a couple of tow trucks. <clears throat> Um, and so we, uh, we hope that we're able to uh, really curb and, and reduce and make it a lot less fun for this uh, bad behavior that has been going on. But we are also taking some actions with some surface parking lots because folks have been going onto those lots. The surface par parking lots, when they're not in operation, need to be secured, they need to be closed off need to have a gate so that folks aren't able to just go on the lot and do donuts and squeal their tires and burn rubber and all that which I'm sure must be fun but it's way too dangerous so those are the four things that really I wanted to to talk about today and then we'll take your questions a few questions mayor uh, starting on the topic of COVID uh, Lindy, who is watching, asked about the zip code 63109 and kind of wants to know if the health department thinks that perhaps some restaurants maybe on like Hampton Avenue uh, or social gathering in that in that area could be to blame. So, Lindy, you know, that's that's interesting. <clears throat> I, I don't think they are to blame. What I, I spoke last evening with Dr. Eccles about, well, are there any clusters of this? You know, is it a nursing home? Is it a a congregate care facility and he said no that really what we are seeing is that COVID is being spread among families and it's being spread among neighbors and so I don't think that, I mean that, I guess that could have something to do with the restaurant but um, somebody gets it and it's spreading among those families and it's spreading among neighbors and uh, so you're seeing a few uh, clusters like that and you know, those are the people that, of course, we, we want to be around, uh, but <clears throat> one, it's just very contagious. So that's what we're seeing. Kyle's question related to rental and mortgage assistance. Uh, does the city anticipate that now 7.4 million is going to be enough to help the people who've applied? You know, Kyle, I think uh, you can always use more money. We've got to use this money very judiciously. Uh, we're trying to keep people in their homes, trying to keep people from being evicted. Um, we are waiting, we're continuing to wait on uh, Congress to do something with regard to federal unemployment assistance, which has not happened yet. <clears throat> um, and 
we are also beginning to see more and more people be laid off. Some people were furloughed or their hours were cut, but now some of them are actually being laid off. So <clears throat> we could always use more money. We've got to use this money very uh, judiciously. And, um, you know, no, it's probably not enough, but it's, it's what we've got. The other thing that we, we did today, I didn't mention this at ENA, we did allocate $200,000 um, for the circuit courts to be able to use for ankle bracelets or electronic monitoring, I should say, uh, in order to keep people um, uh, not in jail, so, <clears throat> but still under uh, monitoring. On downtown, Mayor, Quita's question is, how does one report reckless driving and street racing and who should they be getting a hold of? Really, 911 is the, you know, that, that's, that's the only response that we can get to that. Um, <clears throat> I think what you'll see this, this weekend and uh, subsequent weekends, of course, as you will see, there's, there's more enforcement and there'll be some street closures. Now, there's reckless driving, you know, on any street. If you're gonna call in to 911, you know, have a license plate or something like that, it's it, hard for the police to respond if somebody just says, hey, there's a blue car that just went really fast down King's Highway. But <clears throat> 911 is really the, the way you have to report that. So we got a question from Tanner Mayor about some of the uh, surface parking lots closing them in the short term, but what um, are some things the city is doing, has done, or can do to hold uh, those private owners accountable in their properties? So, I mean, we can revoke their permit to operate those, those lots. That, that's not what we want to do. First of all, we know that there are people who use those surface lots. They might live next door, or they live nearby, or they work next door or nearby. So we want those surface lots to be able to operate but what our rules are, and this has actually been around th since 2011, so darn near 10 years, um, is that those, when those lots are not operating, so night after everybody, you know, those lots have to be secured. That means a gate has to go down, or in some way those lots have to be secured. Um, and I know that, you know, now is a very tough time for these owners because there aren't as many people, you know, people aren't coming down for ball games, they're not paying to park as much, but it's, it's really creating a real problem to be able to have those spaces where the cars are, uh, the drivers of the cars are misbehaving. Question about the <coughs> rental mortgage from Chris, where is the additional money for the assistance coming from? It's coming from the CARES Act funds, Chris. Um, when we originally allocated the CARES Act funds, we allocated all but about four to five million. So we left some contingency there, less than 10% of the amount that we were allocating. But uh, we left some contingency to see, you know, what, where we would need more. We didn't allocate it all on day one. Vicki's question, Mayor, <coughs> on south side uh, COVID cases. Mm -hmm. You talked about a surge uh, down there. Can you provide some of the actual numbers of, of the increases for those zip codes you've talked about? So, <coughs> Vicki, it's not increases. What, and this is, this is on our website, right, Kyle? Mm -hmm. Okay, I thought so. So this is on, on the city's website. Just go right to the homepage, stlouiscity.gov or stlouis-mo.gov. There we go. Uh, and you can look at this map. And this one <clears throat> is for the period from uh, the 5th of August to the 18th. So that's the 14 days. And it just shows you the cumulative totals by zip code. So, for example, cumulative would be since we started. 63116 has had 772 cases. In the last 14, not, it has had 91 of those cases. Uh, it's a densely populated area. 63118 has uh, had 47 cases in the last uh, in the last 14 days and 472 in total. All this is available on our on our website. But I, I don't know what zip code you're in if you're in, interested in a particular one. But but they're all available. They're all on the website. And there's a map. It looks today's map looks like this. The darker blue it is 
the more cases there are in that in that zip code. So um, <coughs> check it out on the website. And then finally, how do uh, you report bars, restaurants who are non-compliant with some of the COVID-19 orders? So um, 622-4800 is the phone number to call for Citizen Service Bureau. Or you can tweet it to at STLCSB. Or you can go on our website and there's a, a, a spot that says make a complaint. Click on that spot. You can complain there about anything, you know, from your trash didn't get picked up to there's a spot there and you can, you can describe the restaurant. You know, we need the name. We really need the address or pretty darn close to it. Um, you know, at least 100 block and what street it is. And, and be as specific as you can because what will happen is one of our uh, inspectors will go there next day or the day after and um, see if they still observe the same thing and talk to the management about it. Try to give them education if they need it um, and, uh, and, and try to bring them around. So. Okay, I lied. One more question from Lashana. Okay, one more? Okay. Uh, you previously talked about how uh, we did not get as much CARES Act money mm -hmm. as you thought we should have. So mm -hmm. her question is, did we ever get um, more allocation from the state of Missouri? Lashana, we did not. We haven't given up on it. Um, but, you know, had we been... Uh, when, when Congress passed the CARES Act, they said, counties over 500,000 people would get the money directly from the federal government. So St. Louis County got about 175 million or about 175 um, <clears throat> dollars per person um, directly from the federal government. The other counties, the federal government sent it to the state and then the state was allocating it back and they were I would say supposed to, or it was recommended that they allocate back 45% of what they got to counties. Uh, the state of Missouri allocated 25% back. So what that means is that the city of St. Louis got about $116 a person. So we got, uh, St. Louis County got 50% more than we got. Let's say it in that way. And we're still in conversations with the governor's office about that. and. Um, you know, the difference was $17 million. So. That's it for today, Mayor. That's it. Thank you all. Thanks for uh, hanging in there. I know we're a little late today, and uh, but we expect to come back and talk with you again on Friday. And uh, thanks so much. Appreciate you being with us.